Happy Holidays! With the wintry season upon us, it seems only fitting to review the polar coaster at Storyland. This is a weird terrain coaster from Hopkins, and it was one of my first coasters. So in this review, I can offer the perspective of both a kid who rode as young as age 3, and as a well-traveled coaster enthusiast. From 1975 to 1986, Storyland was home to the Iceberg Coaster. This was a small family coaster built in-house. After this coaster was retired, the park replaced it with the Polar Coaster. This would be the second coaster ever built by the local Hopkins Rides. It would be placed in the same location as the Iceberg Coaster, but it would be a larger and more robust coaster. And I absolutely love the look of this ride. It is a terrain coaster that winds its way down the hillside. There is a pathway up the hill by this section, or you can go into the observation deck above the station. Then the finale takes place over the water. It is so picturesque. The track is beefy, looking like something from Morgan, and it also has a roar to it. The track and supports are painted icy blue to tie in with the theme, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. The trains are downright adorable. Few look better. They are walruses. The front of the trains features the mammal's bust wearing a winter cap and scarf. One is named Wilbur, and the other is named Waldo. Then the rear car features a textured pattern resembling a tail. And the station is housed in a giant igloo. The detail in the icy cavern looks quite impressive for a regional park. The employees also used to wear clothes adorned with penguins, but this small touch disappeared after Storyland was sold to Park Ace Reunidos. Each train is comprised of three cars, and each car has two rows of two, so each train holds 12 riders. Polar Coaster features two trains, unlike the newer Rorosaurus that has just one. One weird thing about the operations of Polar Coaster is that it does not have a transfer track, so it always needs to run both trains. This coaster can get a 20 to 30 minute wait midday. It is the park's best family coaster. It not only has a lower height requirement than Rorosaurus, as kids as small as 36 inches can ride, but it also offers a far tamer ride experience. But if you head here first thing in the morning, or towards the end of the day, it usually has a minimal wait, if any. The first part of this queue is not pleasant on a hot day. It is a set of switchbacks with zero shade. The end of the queue line takes place in the igloo, which offers a reprieve from the sun. At the end of the queue, the employee lets just enough people into the station to fill the next train. This makes seating first come, but the employees typically allow you to wait an extra cycle if the seat you want is already occupied. From a force perspective, the seat doesn't matter on this ride. However, kids may prefer the front row for the unobstructed view. Riders are restrained by individual lap bars. These restraints allow the employees to quickly check them to minimize stacking. It is worth noting the trains can be a bit cramped for taller guests due to a lack of legroom. Once dispatched, you climb up the lift hill. The ride never gets more than 20 feet or 6 meters above the ground. Much of the track hugs the terrain, but I believe the total elevation change from the ride's highest to lowest point is roughly 4 to 5 stories. This coaster's first half has a lot of similarities to a wild mouse coaster. You wind your way back and forth down the hill only having small changes of elevation along the way. But forget about the crazy laterals you can get in a wild mouse coaster. Polar Coaster offers a much more controlled ride. One or two of the turns towards the end may have a pinch of laterals, but the turns are more forgiving than a mouse. They are wider and partially banked. Midway through the ride, you hit a mid-course brake run. You then have the wilder part of the ride, but wilder is relative. You have a 360 degree downward spiral. You reach your max speed at the bottom, and then you also get some laterals too. You then coast over a bunny hill over the water. It is far too gradual to offer any air time, but it gives the coaster some extra time to showcase its modest speed. You then twist to the right, getting a quick blast of positives, and rise upwards into the final brake run. You then rumble back into the station, ending the 1170 foot or 357 meter long coaster. Hopkins coasters are fairly labeled as weird, but how smooth is Polar Coaster? I am pleased to say, very smooth. This helps make it approachable for all. So what would I rate Polar Coaster? I would give this coaster a 5 out of 10. 
is the perfect starter coaster. Between its cute theme, minimal height off the ground, and smooth ride, parents should feel 100% comfortable taking their kids in this attraction. Just don't expect any thrills here. Even as a kid, I remember finding the coaster quite tame, but I still had a fun time because of the ride's neat placement on the hillside. So those are my thoughts on Polar Coaster at Storyland. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Do you find it as charming as me? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.